this another incest confession? Uh, no, these aren't. It, I don't think they're incest stories. I didn't get them from incest confessions. Okay. This is just from the straight up erotic fiction Reddit. Okay, so we don't know what they are, but they're going to be erotic. Uh, they they should be erotic. I, I've seen some bad words as I glance through, so yeah, there, there should be a little bit of fucking Naughty here. words. So this is ass up in the air. <laughs> okay. It was the same year as Prince Harry and Meghan's royal wedding. Mm, great During year. the summer of 2018, two young people worked the Whippy Dip in Monroeville, Indiana, their hometown. What the hell's the connection with the... Anyway. I know, that's a really weird way. I thought we were going somewhere just... in Europe and then it just whipped us back to America. Yeah, why don't you just say that it's 2018. There, at that Whippy Dip, they fell in love over a shared cup of wild cherry ice cream while on break. It was sweet, intense, Aww. but shorter than either of them wanted it to be. Their entire romance lasted through the summer. Then they were both off to college and the bigger and better things. I hate not being able to go through and correct the Don't syntax. Don't start with shit. that bullshit. Okay, I promise that's the last time I'm going to say it. We all... We all know you now, Coop. We all know that you're going to be pissed off by the grammar, but if you're going to tell their story in the most truthful way to their... It needs to be you need told, to honor them. It needs to be told the way that the author intended. Even if they're fucking it up. Try, just do your best. <clears throat> we know it's not you. But today, eight years later, would be a day of reunion. A time to catch up. And maybe even hook up for old time's sake. Chuck? Charlie Culp? Is that you? Asked Kim in a thrilled and excited voice. Kim Seedman? Chuck responded equally thrilled and surprised. Are the they tubes... putting this shit in quotes too? Uh, yeah, it's in quotes. Okay, is this a confession? Uh, Written in story form? N- or is it just no, story? No, I think this is, this is pure fiction. Okay. The two spontaneously embraced and kissed on the lips in a moment of unrestrained happiness. Pure fiction based on a true story, probably. That's why they That's wrote right. it. Smiling and happy, they were oblivious to the other passengers who were queuing up to board the flight to Denver. Queuing up, this is written by a fucking Brit. It was destiny which allowed their paths to cross at Midway Airport in Chicago that day in mid-November, just a few days before Thanksgiving. Kim, now a freelance graphic artist, had flown out of New York City where she resides. She would be interviewing for a job at the Denver Art Museum. As fate would have it, Chuck, who now lives in Chicago, was also traveling to Denver for a possible assistant coaching job at the University of Colorado. Hmm. It would be a big step up from coaching high school basketball. The flight was scheduled to depart at 8 p.m. The reunited lovebirds insisted on sitting together. The flight wasn't fully booked, so the gate agent gladly accommodated their request. The pair were seated in aisle 34 on the Boeing 737, conveniently five aisles from the lavatory. Oh. I was about to ask why it mattered where they were sitting, but it's foreshadowing, I guess. Half an hour after taking off, as the flight crew dimmed the cabin, it was clear that Chuck and Kim had both swiped right once again. Aww. Aww. That's a modern term for... That's a Tinder app, Yeah. yeah. They began making out as the plane zoomed through the starry night sky above Iowa at 500 miles per hour. At their seats? Rude. Yeah, fucking get a room. Felt as though they were back in 2018 again, just picking up where they left off. I want to feel you inside of me, Kim whispered in his ear. Have you ever done it in an airplane before? Chuck asks. No, but I'm willing to give it a try, Kim softly says in an almost intoxicated voice. Recalling how Chuck knew how to pound her pussy just right. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. There's, there the, there's the fucking magic right there. Now we're getting to the good shit. Recalling how Chuck knew how to pound her pussy just right. Not that she hadn't experienced other since. It's just that Chuck had earned a place in her personal hall of fame. Ew, wait, and what? held one of the keys to her heart. What? Wait, no, he said not that... Not, not that he's... Not that she's experienced other dicks? Is that what he's uh, implying? Other sense. Yeah, she's... So this is eight years after they first met. So right, within, but, those, within those eight years, yeah, she's but that racked just up made it, 800 that just, bodies. I've got a thing about that. If you... Like, my wife and I, 
we have a rule that we pretend that we were both virgins before we met. I don't need to th- either. I don't want to ever think about any other dicks being around there. Oh, me either. I, so I, the fact that he wrote that in I there. I hate that. Or she or he. Oh, maybe it's her that wrote this. And that's that, why she's like thinking about other dicks. That I, would make it I make sense. I think this is all from a, a third person perspective. Yeah, but who wrote it? Him or her? Uh, the author. I'm Which guessing. is one of them for sure, but no, this is fiction. It, it's no, I written. know, but no, but it's which character was George R. R. Martin in Game of Thrones? The story is so good that it had to have been a true story. Is what I'm trying to say. Are we going to lean into the nonfiction aspect? <laughs> well, I'm just we saying, can. any author that writes anything this good, it must have been from a <laughs> this, true event. This, this good? Have you looked at this shit? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Don't talk about other dicks when you're trying to get someone aroused. Is all I'm saying. Yes, please, hey. Tip to the ladies. Don't do that. Don't mention it. Don't. Just don't mention it. It even if it was I mean, I'd say tip for the guys too. Like why Don't mention that great pussy or a loose pussy. It doesn't matter. I don't care if it was a tiny dick or a big dick or or the best sex you ever had or the worst sex. I don't want to know about it. Keep it to yourself. The past is in the past. Right now, if the way that I see it is if I'm if I'm with somebody that I care about that's going to be a long-term relationship, that is the only woman in the world. And that's exactly. the way that I, I would treat the situation. The blue glow cast inside the cabin by the LED overhead lighting provided the perfect ambience and mood for what was about to go down. Why do you have to mm. mention their LEDs? Uh, that's important to the story. I'm assuming it's foreshadowing. The 737 has two unisex toilets at the rear immediately across from one another. Is this guy a fucking engineer? Being real specific <laughs> yeah. about it. And the 737 can fly this many miles before running out of gasoline. Kim was a little nervous, but she was more interested in fucking in the air for the first time. Chuck had earned his Mile High Club credentials back in college during his playing days. This would be his. He's th- writing this. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. It's definitely. This would be his third, and he thought possibly last time busting a nut at 30,000 feet. Oh, Have you? Poor guy. You got your Mile High Club? Nope. I got mine. I can't talk about it. One time. He decided not to share his past aerial exploits with Kim. Good man. That's what you're supposed to That's do. what we were just talking about. The lavatory was ridiculously tiny. However, there was a window which made the space seem larger. Chuck, being an expert, reasoned that their best bet was to fuck doggy style. There's not a window in the... I have never been on a plane that has a window in the bathroom. Ever. This is fiction. It, no, don't. We got to lean into the nonfiction aspect of it. <laughs> Kim agreed, turning her back to him while lowering the pants to her bluish gray track suit along with her panties. Slow this part down. It's getting sexy. She rested her hand on the toilet cover, leaning forward with her face practically touching the acrylic glass window. It was pitch black outside the plane as they flew over Nebraska, an hour away from Denver. Hmm. Took them from Iowa to Nebraska to, to get to this part? French kissing while rubbing on a woman's box always made... <laughs> <laughs> <Sorry. clears throat> French kissing while rubbing on a woman's box always made Chuck's cock hard as a rock. He was beyond ready to penetrate Kim's soaking wet kitty. His only regret was that there wasn't enough space for him to taste her sweet pussy nectar. God damn. Pussy nectar? He said pussy nectar? Yeah. Love this guy. He recalled that she tasted better than the wild cherry ice cream they shared at the Whippy Dip back home in Monroe. He couldn't, he couldn't taste it, so he's remembering how good it tastes? <laughs> no, he said it, it tasted better. Tasted better than the wild cherry ice cream. Yeah, but I'm saying, because he's saying that he, it was so small he couldn't, Eat her pussy. No, he had before, though. Right, that's what they, I mean. They've got he, a history. He wanted to eat her pussy, but he couldn't, so now he's remembering when he did, and it tasted better than... Better than the wild cherry at Whippy Dip. <laughs> it's a good throwback. <laughs> I'm going to start using that as, like, with, with any girls that I'm with, like, oh, man, you taste better than wild cherry at Whippy Dip. Don't, don't do that. Chuck turned to his right to the, open the water faucet wetting his hand and pouring water on his dick. It what? Just use spit like a normal person. Water's not even lube, luby. 
He then entered Kim's warm, tight womanhood from behind. He had to use the water to fuck her? That means she wasn't even into yeah, it. Yeah, she wasn't. <laughs> Kim doesn't want to have any part of this. Yeah, what the fuck? Whoever wrote this has never turned on a woman. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Whoever wrote this has possibly had sex once and did it the and wrong way. And he used water. <laughs> you don't use water? <clears throat> Jesus Could Christ. What the fuck is this? <clears throat> Chuck was surprised at just how tight she was after all these years. Eight years at this point. Was she 26? <laughs> how fucking guys has she run through? Like, why would you what be the... surprised about that? <laughs> She almost felt like a virgin, he thought to himself. Kim, oh, God, okay. This next sentence proves exactly who, who wrote this. It, it was Chuck. <laughs> Kim was enjoying Chuck's fat, nine-inch long cock. He always knew how to work that thing, she thought. By now, Chuck was in rhythm, driving his <laughs> shaft in and out. After five minutes, another passenger interrupted Chuck's cockstroke count. He was, he was counting. He was counting? <laughs> <clears throat> I'm sorry. I honestly don't mean to kill the mood for anybody who's getting into this story. Yeah, there's people, some people out there are probably trying to get off to this. Coop. I promise I will get you to climax. I've said that to a lot of people. It's never <laughs> true. Yeah, that's a lie. Lie detector said <laughs> that was a lie. Dude, this, <laughs> okay, this was a good story to pick because this guy's a fucking lunatic. <laughs> uh, I need to take it back just just one sentence. Let's go back to yeah, go back a little bit more. By now, Chuck was in rhythm, driving his shaft in and out. After five minutes, another passenger interrupted Chuck's cock stroke count. He was trying to reach one hundred pussy strokes before giving Kim his full load. <laughs> This was written by a virgin. This is written. It's this, this was written by a virgin. Yeah. Is anyone there? It sounded like an older lady. Um, yes, I'm on the toilet, Kim replied back. The old lady went away, but it signaled to Chuck that he should blow his full load sooner and not later. The next knock could be from a flight attendant or, God forbid, even a U.S. air marshal. <laughs> that, dude, that... The stakes are getting raised. This is this hot. Not really, but... <laughs> Holy shit, this story is... I'm glancing ahead. This story is so fucking ridiculous. Sorry, everybody continue masturbating. Let, I'll, I'll let keep them going. get in the zone, Coop. <clears throat> Kim's legs were beginning to shake as her pussy juices ran down her inner thighs. Chuck was going hard in the paint, trying to hurry up. Then Kim asked him to stick it in her ass. <laughs> New <oice. laughs> Chuck was surprised because the Kim he knew was not adventurous like that at all. In fact, she was prude. He figured that this must be something she began while away at art school in New York. <laughs> so he stuck his cock in her ass. <laughs> it's seriously how fast the transition is. Just next sentence. So he stuck his cock in her ass. The funny thing was, was that her asshole was much looser than her pussy. <laughs> Where the fuck is this story going? All right, almost done. <laughs> the truth of the matter is that Kim didn't allow guys she dated to fuck her naturally, unless she really thought they had potential. There were only three men who even came close to measuring up. Chuck was number one. All the others got blowjobs, and if they knew how to eat her pussy really well, she might let them fuck her in the ass. She did meet some amazing clit lickers in her travels, which explains why she had such thing. <laughs> Jesus Christ. She did meet some amazing clit lickers in her travels, which explains why she had such a gaping rectum, yet such a sweet, tight pussy. <laughs> what a good girl. What the fuck is this? <laughs> this is worse than the incest Dude, it, confessions. But something that I'm noticing is it seems like the authors are are just trying to get themselves off as they go through because the closer it gets to the end, the less descriptive it is. And then it's just like, oh, and he's done. <laughs> so here we go. Chuck finished off in Kim's ass. He did such an amazing job pounding her ass that she wanted to give him some ATM treatment. But there was no room to even turn around. Aww. 
The lavatory was as constrained as a telephone booth, like the ones you see in old movies. Neither Chuck nor Kim found what they were looking for in Denver, but at least they found each other. A good fuck is hard to find on the ground, let alone in the air. The end. So that was... uh, What's the title of that? That was Ass Up in the Air. Ah, it makes sense now. I mean, it's essentially The Great Gatsby. What the hell? <laughs> but you notice how it, like the the pacing of the story picks up so much faster right when you get to the end, and then as, as soon as it's getting close to the end, it's like, oh, and then he came and everything That's what was makes done. them unique, though. It's a unique form of writing. It's like the writing gets worse as it goes because the guy is about to get off. Yeah. Or is getting off. But you can tell in the writing, which makes it actually... Its own form of writing. I mean, overall, it's a fairly accurate representation of sex. As soon as the guy's about done, at least like, a okay, man, at least a man's mental state. Yeah. 